Back on Inside Tennessee, our guest this Sunday, Mayor Madeline Rojero, who happens to be the first female mayor in the state of Tennessee of one of the major four cities. So that is something certainly that we appreciate as an accomplishment of yours. Well, thank you. It was certainly an honor to be in that position. And I, it's been uh, not just being the first woman, but just being able to serve as mayor for seven and a half years now. It's an unbelievable opportunity. Uh, mayors always say this is where the rubber meets the road, right? We can't pass it on to anybody else. So uh, it's really exciting to be able to work with a great team and great, great staff and uh, great community partners and, and make things happen. We'll talk more about your legacy to come. John? Mayor, continuing sort of to look to some of the other projects that you are in the middle of and leaving behind along with city staff, let's talk a little about the Tanova site. You addressed it in your budget speech. Of course, last year you said we want to look at that site um, and that is at that last year you were saying we think that's uh, well that looks like that's a possible now it sounds like you're saying we do plan to put the police department and the fire department there that's pretty much no question that's where you think it's going to well, go well our that is our proposal to council sure. and it will be on the agenda on tuesday uh, may 7th and so we're asking uh, council to approve the agreements that would transfer the property from tenova to the city and to start moving forward on the uh, renovation and new construction. It will be the police department, fire department, city court, and the city pension office. In your judgment is, um, I think I've heard the number 40 million for working on that site as what's needed. Do you feel that's still a good solid number? You, you hear talk from time to time from other places in the city county building of, oh, I bet it's going to be a lot more than that. Do you feel good about that well, number? Well, nobody else uh, who's saying that has actually been looking at the numbers and what the our paid consultants have reviewed. So um, that is, uh, we're still very comfortable with those numbers. Uh, the good part about it is that the, the, the buildings are right there. They're, they're uh, vacant uh, mostly. Uh, you can get a good look at exactly what the systems are and, and we know a lot about the facilities. So, um, so at this point we're comfortable with that number. No surprises you think in any of those buildings what, what you all are about or what we're about well, to get? Well the biggest surprises of course will be in the, in the part of the property that we're not using. We're going to use the southern right. end of the property where the where the, cons the construction is a little newer. The historic building on the north side, the old, the original historic hospital, we won't be using that. And that's where whenever a developer comes in, there, there are always lots of unknowns when you get into property like that. But part of our budget, so last year we allocated the $40 million uh, for uh, the, the facility. And this year, we put, we uh, in the budget is another six and a half million that I'm asking council to approve. That would allow us to secure the north end of the site. Some structures will be demolished that we're told by everyone are really obsolete. The historic building will 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 secure it, and uh, and so we'll do basically clean up the site. And KCDC will is working on a redevelopment plan for us. They are our, our redevelopment authority in addition to being a housing authority. This may be premature, which is fine, but have you heard anybody, has anybody sort of said, gee, we kind of like that, that could be really interesting for us someday? Well, there's the profession, one, the Clark Tower and the historic building, and right, there are people who have expressed an interest, but uh, nothing, uh, but there's nothing concrete. And so we'll go through a whole public process for anything like that. So continue on with the, um, sort of the police and fire project. Obviously, if those departments come over to the old Tanova site, that leaves the old police department at Hill and Baker um, free and vacant. And last year, you announced that um, uh, potentially Jim Clayton and the Family Foundation would be building a museum there. Since in the last few months, there's been some question about whether is that really going to happen or not? Is that where they're going to go? Are they still talking to the city? Can you update us on that? Right. We are still hopeful that uh, Mr. Clayton will decide to build the museum there. We think it's a wonderful location right next to the parking. A lot of parking is, is right there. Good location. It's, it's an excellent great location. Access. Great access. Uh, we think it's a perfect site. Um, he is uh, doing his due diligence. Obviously, there are a lot of landowners who would like a museum 
on their property. So uh, he is doing his, his due diligence to review others. I was happy to see him at my budget speech on, on Friday. And uh, it, we are uh, very hopeful that he will uh, move along, move, you know, continue to work with us and actually build the museum there. They released a statement to us um, this week saying it's going to be in the city of Knoxville, wherever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and there, he's being approached, as you alluded, to potential other sites. The thing is, you can't just plop a $100 million museum down anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have access, good site, location, visibility. Any other places that come to your mind if that's not where it ends up? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make any suggestions. No, we think it's a perfect site, but I respect Mr. Clayton. It's a marvelous gift that he's given to our community, uh, he and his family. And uh, so we, um, we are patient, and we hope that, um, that uh, they'll, they'll come back and say that they have made the decision that this is the, the perfect place for them. A lot, Very good. a lot more to cover with Mayor Madeline Rojero, including affordable housing and also the potential for baseball back in the city of Knoxville. More with her right after this.